Say hi. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's Just Play Pokemon, and I'm back here for another team builder with my man, the assistant coach, Moonlight Swami, a.k.a. Swami Studios, and we are back for week number six. And um, Swami finished flogging me for my terrible mistakes and preparation in the prior week when he was gone, and uh, I have repented for my sins. No, you haven't. And now we're going to do this team builder and be much better prepared against the Golden State Go-Go's. If you're on the Pokemon Fab 5 here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We do have a lot of stuff coming for you guys, and this is just like a little a little taste of uh, what you'll see. And you can head over to my channel, Just Play Pokemon, for uh, the actual battle that goes along with this team builder. That's the way we do it. So check them out, and let's get into it, man. Uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup against Miss Snow Bunny and the Golden State Go Goats. Yes. I like the logo. I like the Warriors in real life. She's a West Coaster. She's had some interesting battles so far, and she's three and one. So, or three and four and one. I she's should say. She's four and actually. one. Yeah, four and one. So, pretty solid, man. I, I see a couple Pokemon that are pretty scary to me. Uh, she had a very short battle last week, only nine, like nine minutes and forty-one seconds. So she really wrecked through, and uh, I believe six would her prior opponents 4-0 but the week before she 6 0 yeah lots of lots of domination so this is a little scary yes well one of the things that stands out to me from her team is she loves to set up yep so cling clang is one of those interesting pokemon that with its steel typing it gets gear grind and it gets shift gear which is one of my favorite moves in the game where you uh increase attack by one stage and speed by two so right. after that you pretty much outspeed everything and it's a dangerous Pokemon, to say the least. It has clear body, so it can't have its uh, stats lowered. But all in all, Kling Kling is one of those late-game sweepers that we're prepared for. I think, yep. uh, for the most part, we can take care of. Um, I'll, we'll go over the team that we're going to be bringing in a second. But main threats for our team, Zapdos is a big one. Um, that's just a, it's a difficult Pokemon to deal with at all times. Yep. Uh, yeah. Snorlax, we're prepared for. Dusclops, we're more than prepared for. Cloyster... Uh, can be dangerous. Crustle is something that she loves to bring. Hasn't gotten a lot of sweeping going on, but it's a good Pokemon. Uh, What's that smell? What's that smell? I smell uh, Earth Power. Earth Power might be nice, right? Among other things, yes. Um, <laughs> we have multiple ways to deal with the Crustle. Yes. Mega Slowbro is a little bit of a pain, but we have ways to deal with that as well. Umbreon, we're not afraid of, or we shouldn't be. Um, right. Gudra... Same thing, you know. We don't need to worry too much about it. We have ways to deal with it. Go Goat, one of the weaker Pokemon among her team, and Aromati she hasn't brought once, which she might bring this time. But if she does, she'll be in for a bad time. So, Amen. basically, just gonna run down the weaknesses. You do not see it on the screen, but it's okay. Um, the typing weaknesses for her team: zero normal weaknesses, two fire, one water, one grass, two electric, one flying, one ground, two poison. 3 Fighting, 3 Ice, 3 Bug, 0 Psychic, 2 Dark, 2 Ghost, 3 Rock, 2 Steel, 1 Dragon, 2 Fairy. And I will send that over to you right now so you can just get a hold of that. Thank you. Basically, uh, what I've seen, uh, because I, I got real pissed off of how terrible I did and I, I doubled down on my preparation. I visited Smogon, I did a lot of stuff uh, to try to try to help this along so it's A, a shorter video, and uh, B, I'm better prepared on my own before Swami and I talk about the teams. Uh, I think that Lucario is going to be a big, big, big factor in this, as well as anything dark typing or dark type moves. Snarl, Knockoff are the two that jumped out to me uh, just in doing preparation for some of these teams, uh, potentially, that Miss No Bunny could bring. There's a lot of, lot of universal, like, oh, shit, I need Lucario for this. Oh, shit, I need Knockoff or Snarl for that. You know, yes. dark type moves. So that's what I saw, and that's why, you know, when we talked about this, Swami and I did, you know, put together a team as far as what Pokemon Swami did the moves. Um, but, yeah, we've, we've got a good solid team here, and obviously Lucario had to be there. Just yes. 100% had to be there. And just to make a side note, JPP did, for the most part, pick the team. I let him go, I know, go out on that, fault. and he did a good job. I would have corrected him if he didn't. And he, he, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I would have. I would not have let you sink or swim in that scenario. So, yeah, I mean, looking at our team, and we do have a trade that will be occurring as of next week. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Swami coming through again. We have traded Chansey. 
to the Atlanta Braviaries for Superior. So that gives us some offensive pressure, a Pokemon that has good defenses too. Chansey just doesn't have use for us. It's not JPP yeah. style. Um, yeah, the, the more that I've gone on in the league, the more I've realized I hate stall, even though it's a valuable thing, a viable thing. I'm not bitching, wanting, complaining. But I hate it, and I don't play that way. So you got to fix your style up, right? You know, if Chansey, even if Chansey's a great Pokemon, it's not a great Pokemon for me. Yeah, so exactly. So, that, you know, Superior is going to be a much improved thing. I'm sure we'll be talking about that next week. Yes, absolutely. It'll most likely be in the team for at least a few uh, rounds about it. So, spoiler sh <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, uh, the Pokemon that are sitting on the bench this week are Chansey, um, Barbarical, Flareon, Staraptor, Meganium, and that's everything, right? Vanillux. Yeah. No, that, well, we have Barbarical instead of Vanillux. It just hasn't been updated on there. It's on the transactions, but not up there. Yeah, but it's sitting out. It's not on the team. Oh, shoot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got rid of that stupid ice cream cone. Yeah, yeah that's, yes. that's basically what it was. So, it was, all, it was, it was There was no strategy to that. I just fucking hate ice cream, guys. Well, well there was a strategy to it, but... <laughs> <laughs> you lactose intolerant prick. That's right. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's the team, man. We got Stoutland, Lucario, Nidoqueen, Imoga, Tentacruel, and Gallade. And we'll be going through these one by one. I've got the team up here. I've got two screens, so if I'm looking back and forth and looking down and taking notes, I swear I'm paying attention to Swami. It's just that uh, I got a lot going on there. Okay. Prepare for this battle. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move uh, Amolga down to the bottom because I want to save that one for last because it's really cool. Because uh, it's awesome. Yes. So leading things off, we have Mega Gallade, and uh, it's a pretty standard Mega Gallade in some regards and in others it's not. So we have close now, combat, which will one deal thing. what one thing. Now, when you say leading off, do you think it should be the lead? No. Okay. Good. Well, well you know what? We'll we'll start with Lucario then, because <laughs> Lucario Sorry. is going to be almost a guaranteed lead for us. Yeah, I think that again, it's super important to get started off strong. I need some momentum at the start, and yes. Lucario's got a lot of things that it can do to a lot of her Pokemon. Yes, absolutely. So, the first things first is, honestly though. Um, if Crustle wants to go Earthquake and it takes out Lucario first turn after you hit it, it's not the end of the world at all. So just keep that in mind. So like, don't. I'm scared. Yeah, don't don't go on tilt because that happens if it happens. Um, so first off, we have Lucario, and it is carrying Dark Pulse, Close Combat, Flash Cannon, and Vacuum Wave, and it is a uh, what's that? Jolly Nature? No, sorry, it's Naive Nature. So it's a minus and special defense. And that way we get uh, still enough attack from the close combat. We still get enough attack from the uh, special attacks. And it's a speed-boosting nature. So carrying Life Orb, carrying Steadfast. So if it flinches, it gains uh, one stage in speed. Yeah, just, just going for the hard-hitting, powerful stuff with the quickness. Yes. I mean, that's the idea. Absolutely. So if the Crustle wants to go for a setup first turn, which it might, you know, it... If she's expecting it to be a physical Lucario, and yeah. she's not prepared for a Flash Cannon, it'll knock it down to its sturdy, and after that, Vacuum Wave will finish it. So, uh, if she leads with a Cloister, then Vacuum Wave one-shots it. So, or if it doesn't, it will take it out in a second one. So, and Cloister can't do anything to you. So... That's another thing. Um, Dark Pulse is there to deal with uh, Dusclops, in a way. It's also there to deal with Mega Slowbro. And it is also there as, if you predict a Zapdos switch in, Dark Pulse will do more damage than anything else you have. So keep that in mind. Oh. So there's that. Um, actually, I didn't change that yet. After yeah, and we had some... Uh, we had some interesting discussions about what moves to put on this thing um, because Swami asked me you know do you want to take out uh, basically was asking me if I wanted to take out close combat for another move um, and not have that fighting type and I was like you know I don't really think I want to do that you know I want to have dark pulse and close combat on it for the for the coverage yeah and that was important to me because I need versatility to cover up my mistakes. That's the bottom line. And and the more things that I can do uh, type-wise attacking to put pressure on my opponent, the better I feel. Yeah. So uh, one of the things to keep in mind as you get later on in battles 
w- did you notice that she switched out a lot? Yeah, I did notice that, and that's good for me because I actually do pretty. So far, within reason, <laughs> I feel pretty good about when my opponent switches out. I always feel like that's an advantage for me, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's a mental thing of like they had to change their strategy instead of me moving around my stuff, but I felt good about it. I, I sometimes can predict things well. I've got to get better at it. Yeah, you got it. You're always a work in progress, but I always feel like if I make them change their strategy first, then that's better. If I'm the aggressor. Yeah. Well, one thing to keep in mind, she won't expect some of this move set from a lot of your Pokemon. Okay? Right. Yeah. Some Pokemon have more standard move sets, like. Yeah. You should expect frustration from a Stoutland. You should yeah. expect Earth Power, maybe, from Nidoqueen. You should expect frustration from Stoutland here on out. Again, last week, in my rush to get the Pokemon together with the Jenning, I didn't do the happiness right. No, you did not. No, you did not. So Swami used frustration and put frustration <laughs> on Stoutland, and now we're good. So Yes, so there's that. Um... So keep that in mind, that if she sees a move, and you bring in Lucario again, a second time to face that Pokemon, she might switch out. Yep. You know, knowing now that that move is there, she might not have been aware the first time. So keep that in mind, that if, you know, a Pokemon faints and you have to, and you switch in, and that's a situation, then you have to be, you know, aware of that. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, we've explained Lucario. The Life Orb is there to make sure it hits hard. Uh, level 60 is not important because, I mean, it, it was just the Lucario that I built. So I, I think so I can have close combat. Um, it might have been something else at the time, but... Yeah, level level up, I think it gets close combat at like 58 or something. Yeah, so I, I got it to level 60, so I keep it at level 60 on here just so I can make sure that the stats match up when I gen it. Um, yes, sir. Next up, we have Mega Gallade. And Gallade is just a normally, you know, legitimate Pokemon. It it, it just hits really hard. If um, I could get, if I could get, I feel like this is the difference for me in the battle. What? And and I don't, I haven't been using Mega Gallade. I just been shitty with it. And and yes, I have. know that it's a good Pokemon. I know that I can do great things with it. But I just need to unlock the key. Which I'm glad that you've got Ice Punch on it because a few of my opponents in the past that I've been watching um, have said, "Oh shit, there goes Ice Punch." You know. And we've we've been predictably unpredictable, and that's great. But I want them to be scared of Ice Punch and see an Ice Punch this time. You know, there yeah. are some ice weaknesses on this team. Yes, there are. There are exactly three ice weaknesses yeah. on the team. It's in Gudra, it's in Zapdos, and it is in Go Goat. But Ice, as a whole, is not resisted very well. Snorlax will resist it, but then you can just close combat, and there's no way she's switching in on that. Dusclops could, but we have knockoff, so that thing is toast. Uh, Crustal. Maybe Mega Slowbro. Mega Slowbro's a little bit interesting because you can't knock off a Mega Stone, so it's not going to do too much damage. Keep that in mind. But um, typing, typing wise, you're still going to put a little bit of the Fear God into it, right? You know, throw a knockoff in there. A little. Or is it? Or is it? What's a better play? Because I know Mega Slowbro is going to come out. Like, pretty sure that's going to be there. Well, Mega Slowbro. One of the reasons that I have uh, Dark Pulse on Lucario is for that. Yeah. Also, I have electric type attacks to deal with it in other Pokemon because I know that's gotcha. So, Gallade's probably not the best Pokemon for it. It probably will start setting up on you, um, but I'd say the best Pokemon to deal with it is probably not Tentacruel. It might be Stoutland. Snarling it probably is the best move. Okay, so back to Gallade. So we have Close Combat, Destiny Bond, Ice Punch, and Knockoff. <laughs> Why did you focus on Destiny Bond, Swami? I put Destiny Bond on because of all of her team, only one Pokemon can get even close to outspeeding you, and that would be Zapdos, and it's not going to unless it's Choice Scarfed. Um, the Cloyster and the Crustle, when they have uh, Shell Smashed, will outspeed, but you're not going to be dealing with... You're not going to switch Mega Gallade into that. So, yeah. really, it's... Okay... We're at the end of our rope here. Let's go for a Destiny Bond. Um, hey, it worked for me before. I got a Destiny Bond kill. You know, another right. thing is, you could conceivably save your Gallade towards the end. That's that's my thinking. Any of those suicide moves... I don't know if I just have this like predilection towards, like, fuck you, you fucked me, so fuck you. But, like, I like those moves. I don't know what it is. It's like... 
If I if there's a Pokemon that I'm scared of on her team, I would much rather just Destiny Bond the shit out of it. <laughs> just but, get it away. Yeah, like Trade if, one for one. If you're you know? in uh in the red or the low yellow mm-hmm. and you have Gallade City in the back and you have a Pokemon go down against Mega Slowbro, switch that motherfucker in and just take that thing out. Yeah, like, I, I really would trade. It's like trading a double play for a run in baseball. Like, I still got a run. Yeah. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and knock something out that, that is... The, the things that scare me most on the team are Zapdos and potentially, if I don't have the right combination of Pokemon left, Mega Slowbro. Yeah. Um, one thing I do need to see about the Zapdos, because I want to make sure... I don't want you to just sacrifice your <laughs> Pokemon for no reason. I know, reason. I know. It's like, I, know, I don't want to do that, but if I have... No, I know, but I want to just look something up. Zapdos, let's say it's physically defensive. Ice Punch, that's not a lot of damage. Um, that's if it's physically defensive, though. That's a bulky Zapdos. I don't think she carries a bulky Zapdos. Right. Okay, but look, so look at that damage. It does about 65 to 77%. Um, it can't do that much to you either, per se. Uh, wait, Modest Nature. There we go. With Life Orb... Okay, so I mean, look at—that's the damage that it can do to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're still gonna two shot it with ice, ice punch. Oh, no, I was gonna say, yeah, okay, yeah, I like it. Ice punch is gonna do do enough to scare. And That's if you and if you have stealth rocks up uh, and it comes in, then it has a 75 percent chance to one shot it. So, you know, just keep that in mind if that's a very uh, offensive Zapdos. And I've seen her run a life orb Zapdos before because it has good natural bulk. But, right. you know, just keep that in mind that Zapdos is a little bit of a threat, but you will outspeed it unless it's choice scarfed. Yep. You'll outspeed everything on her team in their base unless they're choice scarfed, which is good. Yep. Um, next up, we have Waiver wire the Nido Queen. I feel I'm feeling better about Nido Queen. Things are going a little better there. Yes. Um, I I didn't have again I didn't have the strongest week, but one of the things that we talked about offline is Nido Queen is so versatile moveset wise that you could surprise people. And one of the only good plays that I made last week was having the fucking Thunderbolt on the Scarmory. I put this the Fear of God in a Papa C right there, and we were talking afterwards. He was like, Man, you surprised me with that. I want to. I want Nita Queen to be like, ta-da! Fuck you. Yeah, and that's my that's my best Nita Queen impersonation. So. Yeah, well, I mean it was good, but thanks. <laughs> so, the reason that we have this Nita Queen like this, first off, we have it max speed because Cloyster most likely will be running max speed, and if it is, Thunderbolt will just annihilate it. Mm-hmm. That's just that's the, the straight and narrow of it. Stealth Rock obviously is something good to have on a predicted switch in. If you're facing Zapdos. Zapdos can carry Hidden Power Ice. Wait, hold on. You said you said Thunderbolt's gonna annihilate Slowbro. Slowbro and Cloyster. Oh well, yeah. Okay, Water type. Okay, I just want to make sure I heard the right. Yeah, Pokemon. Cloyster because it has like forty-five special defense. Yeah, cannot take that. <laughs> yeah, it might not even be able to take an Earth Power to be honest. Right. Um. So one of the things that I like about this Nido Queen set is that Ice Beam can do a good amount to a Zapdos. I'm going to stop closing the calculator so I can just show you it. Because that, that's a bad habit of mine. Yeah, man. To keep the tabs, you know, free. Uh, let's say it's physically defensive. Neato you think, clean. You think Earth Power is going to do the Zapdos in, huh? No, I don't think Earth Power will. Per se. Okay. Ice Beam, 72 to 85%. Right. If, it, if it's... That's a lot of HP investment. Um, so, I mean, look at that. That's That's a lot of damage to it. That's actually yeah. that's oh, also modest. Yeah. You got a shot at one shot. That, that's modest though. Uh, timid, timid. Yeah. Still pretty close. Yeah, that's that's a lot of damage. So okay, Sludge Wave actually isn't bad there either. It, no, but it's not good enough against the other Pokemon. Oh, so, okay, there we go. Thunderbolt. Hey. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens if she's one of the people who likes to roost, like yeah. if she wants to roost in your face. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna stay calm. I'm not gonna go. But but if she go. roosts. And you know that she's roosting. Earth power one shots the Zapdos. Guaranteed. Because mm-hmm. roost eliminates its flying typing. So I could predict a roost. If you want, you could predict a roost. Yes. If you've See, seen Okay, so if okay, let's say that I predict a roost, roost doesn't happen. Then you're gonna do no damage. Fucking nothing. So it's a risk. 
Yeah. But Ice Beam will still do 46% or so to the Zapdos after the Roost. So Okay. So safe play is Ice Beam. Home run swing is Earth Power. Got yes. It. If, if, that's I home run, if I home run swing and hit that shit, oh my god. Yeah, that, see, that would be sick. Thing. Okay, so shouldn't I, in that situation, go for an Ice Beam first? Uh, because I'm, well, Zapdos is going to outspeed, isn't it? Okay, yes, so it will. Well, it, here, could, here. it could Roost. Yes. Uh, and then I would Ice Beam, let's just say. And then next turn, I can Earth Power. Yes, pretty much. So Got this it. is Hidden Power Ice, if it's Life Orb, because it's probably Life Orb, and Modest. Mm -hmm. Has a shot to two hit you. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep that. But I'll take my chances, you know what? Actually, I no, mean, that, 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 it will hit, it will two I hit want you. To, <laughs> I want to roll the dice a little bit when it comes to the big Pokemon, because I feel like that chance being taken... At least I've knocked this thing down to half HP. If I have to trade two Pokemon for one in that situation with that one, I feel pretty confident dealing with all of our other stuff. If Zapdos is gone, I feel like I've cut the head off the snake. Yeah, and you're right to think that because it is her, by far her best Pokemon. Now, she does yeah, have some stalling I options. Fucking um, love Zapdos. God, I want one. Buy me one. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, she does have some stalling options. She has a couple uh, Wish Pokemon and Umbreon okay. and Aromatisse. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. That which is which is just a complete whiff on my part. Like I know nothing. You know the wish comes true. That's all I know. Okay, so I don't know shit about that. Basically, so, wish yeah. is very simple. Yeah. Wish uh, is a two-turn heal that will heal up half the Pokemon's health based on the is HP a... stat. Okay, but right. it doesn't have to be the Pokemon that used wish. Right, because you know you could wish. That's that's what I remember. You when wish I've you had switch. That played against me is. You know, let's say Zapdos is about to die, it uses Wish. Just, you know, example Pokemon. It uses Wish, I knock it out, next turn a new Pokemon comes in, it's at half HP, the Wish comes true, and it's Pokemon, that Pokemon's HP is restored. Yeah. It's like a two-turn recover. Yes, and now here's yeah. another thing. Aromatisse is a Wish Pokemon. I, see, I don't think that she's going to bring that. Though. I don't she's think she is too, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, could, could Wish, it could Wish. W look at that 101 HP stat. Yes. That's going to recover a lot of health. Yeah, so how do we deal with Wish? That becomes the question. You, you don't. You just you hit hard. You know, you, yeah. I'm just saying that this <laughs> that, that could be an option. Umbreon right. 2, that 95 HP. Right. So right, those right. are two Pokemon that you're going to have to be a little bit aware of. Um, but also, Umbreon. Umbreon has Synchronize, so uh, be careful. Yeah. Go back to that real quick, if you could, please. What, to Umbreon? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All right. <laughs> You and your tabs, man. There's Umbreon. Yes. Ah, go up. Stay. Nope. Did that. Ah. Okay. Are you reading yeah. Synchronize? Yeah, I wanted to make sure... Hidden abilities there, too. Okay. So you think it's going to be a Synchronize one. Yeah. That should make sense. Basically, Electric-type Pokemon cannot be paralyzed. Poison yeah, and Steel-type like throw... Pokemon cannot be poisoned. Um, yeah. Things like that. Also, okay. if you have Toxic Spikes... Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that it doesn't apply. I'm not okay. positive, but it's... Okay, good enough. I just had to take a couple notes there. Just yeah. want to make sure that I've got that. Yeah, absolutely. That I'm ready for that. Okay, so uh, this moveset is specific for this battle, obviously. Ice Beam does a lot to the Zapdos. It does a decent amount to the Gudra because it is a specially defensive monster. Uh, it should one-shot Go-Goat, I'm not positive on that, but it, it probably should. Thunderbolt right. will do a lot to Cloyster, it'll do a lot to Mega Slowbro, and Earth Power will do a lot to pretty much anything else, because unless it resists it, it uh, it'll, it'll one-shot Cling Clang without a doubt. But one of the things that is really cool is that on a normal Queen set versus Crustle, which let's say it's... Mm, wrong, wrong Crustle. There we go. That's a one shot, guaranteed. Earth power. Crystal. See, yeah, Nido Queen is moving up the list here. I feel like Lucario, Nido Queen, and then Emoga too. When we get there, yeah, well, it's not no one shot because that's sturdy. But you know what I mean. It's it's. Oh, it's gonna take it down, and that's what I care about because yeah. you know, and, I, that, I and then you have something in and out speeds like oh I don't know, make a galley and go. <laughs> well. Be careful because if she shell smashes, she'll outspeed everything yeah, on your team. Which is which is fine, but I want that scare. I want. Her I know. To be I'm just saying that you'll need priority to finish it. 
Yes. It will outspeed everything on your team. Goddamn cell smash. <laughs> everything, okay? Everything. So, uh, one of the cute little tricks that we have is going to be that uh, Moga, but we'll get to that later. Yes. Next up, we have Tenek Rule. So, Rule. she does have a defogger, and uh, of course, being the Zapdos. Yep. Cloyster, technically he can get rapid spin, but uh, I don't know about... I don't think Crustle can. I, I think Cloyster can, but I don't think that's a move that you want to run on it. Right. Um, so aside from that, they have no way to remove it, and there are no Poison-type Pokemon on this team. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Pokemon that you want to look at is Tentacruel. Yep. We have Max HP, Max Special Defense. Okay. With a bold nature. So we're not going... Full, full special defense, but I want this to be a special defensive wall for you. Got it. Okay, so that, that, yeah. it has the recovery, it has that. One of the things that's great, it has rapid spin, it has knockoff. Mm -hmm. It has scald, so it can burn some of those physical attackers if you want to go you know, Kling Clang, if you want to go Snorlax, if you want to go Cloyster or Crustle, or even get a little bit of a burn on Umbreon. I'd, I'd hold off on the Umbreon, though, just because... I feel like if you want to go that route, Toxic Spikes is your answer. So, do you know the mechanic for Toxic Spikes? What do you mean? Uh, it's it's like spikes. Oh, like what it is? Yes. Yes, I do. Only poison. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Toxic Spikes, one layer, will poison a Pokemon. Yep. But that's the normal poison. Right. Not two, toxic poisons. Two layers, toxic poisons. Got it. So, keep that in mind that uh, it, it does a lot. Um, Umbreon also can carry Heal Bell, so keep that in mind as well. But if you have toxic spikes and she can't get rid of it, it doesn't matter how many times she Heal Bells, it's going to be a pain in the ass for her. Yeah, and then it's a wall as well, so... Yeah, so that'll start whittling it down, whittling and, it down. and Tentacruel can last. Mm -hmm. So... That's why I have that uh, the way it is. So, that's pretty simple. I thought a little bit of Bold Nature just to get its def defense a little bit usable. Uh, yep. she, she seems to have a lot more special attackers outside yep. of the setup Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, okay, you know, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, right. Keep in mind that Mega Slowbro probably will carry Psy Shock, not Psychic. Right. So, that could be a little bit bad. Alright, next up we have Stoutland. Frustration. <laughs> Frustration. Max HP, max attack, adamant nature, four speed. Leftovers, intimidate. I love yes. the intimidate on this. Pokemon. I always love intimidate on this thing. I love switching it in. It makes me happy because I know that I have dropped them down at least one uh, by the fact of just simply coming in. It's been very rare. Actually, I don't think this thing has been one shot yet. Uh, yeah, really nice. it shouldn't be able to. It's it's a bulky Pokemon. I mean, you know, but I love that. I love the fact that I can switch in, knock somebody's, uh, knock somebody down a level, and it's with something like Kling Clang. I mean, I feel a little better about that. Not saying I'd use it against it, but you know, that helps me uh, feel yeah. a little better. Uh, Thunder Wave on it too. Yeah, Snarl. Snarl's going to be important there to me. And the Rock Tomb is important as well. So, the way I look at it is this: Frustration is a great move for you. Um, it's going to do a lot of damage to everything. Sands, Dust Clubs. And maybe Tentacruel and maybe Crustle, just because they resist it. But the thing that's cool I'm about... I'm not facing a Tentacruel. Not Tentacruel. Did I say Tentacruel? You did. Uh, Clang Clang, Crustle, and... There you go. Dust Clubs. Dust Clubs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So... The cool thing about this Stoutland is that it's carrying Snarl, so mm -hmm. it can start lowering the special attacks of Pokemon like Slowbro. Slowbro. Yeah. But Rock Tomb is the cool one. So, do you know what Rock Tomb does? That's is Doesn't that lower their special defense? It lowers their speed. Speed, okay. It is a 60 power Rock type move with 95 accuracy. 100% will lower their speed by 1. So, one of the things that's really cool about that is, well, two things. One, if you switch into a Crustle or something, and you yeah. go with a Rock Tomb, it'll no longer outspeed everything in, in your entire world, which is cool. Two, Zapdos will no longer outspeed. 
that. So Zapdos will no longer outspeed Nido Queen in that situation. Uh, just let me make sure about that. So, so if I see Zapdos, it's almost like I can switch into Stoutland. Here's an Intimidate, catch this Rock Tomb, and yeah, pretty much. that really helps for the rest of the battle. Yeah, take a look at this. So, non-speed boosting nature, max speed Zapdos, 152. Ooh, yeah. Max speed Nino Queen, 140. So we're, we're slower. You put that at minus one, it doesn't change it on here, unfortunately. But you can do the math that when you go one stage, that is uh, 0.5 lower. Instead of, you know, twice as low. Right. So, let's see, 152... Times 0 0.5. 76 speed. No, that, so that, that's Nito having Queen it. Comes that's in having like it. That's having bruh. it. <laughs> uh, that's point. You want 0 0.05. 0 0.75. 114 is what its yeah, speed will still. be. So 114 means that, taking a look at this, uh, Stoutland does not outspeed it. Tentacruel does. Nino Queen does. Gallade already did. Lucario will, guaranteed. That's important. That's super important. Yes. So I have a few options for Zapdos. That makes me feel better. You you have you have missed the compass, sir. <laughs> yeah, so you have a few options for Zapdos. And the Rock Tomb, which won't do a ton. I mean, let's just be honest here. Stoutland is not a Pokemon that you're going to be wanting to do too much damage with. But it still does. I mean, look at that. That's that's Choice Band, but we don't run Choice Band. We Stoutland, could. Stoutland, I've always felt like it's been my go-between, but it's, it's forced them to swap out to what I want to go punch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So, frustration. <laughs> uh, Shut up. <laughs> rock Tomb. Okay, look at that damage. That is serious damage on Rock Tomb. Yo. Yo. That's with no defense. So and frustration too. Man. That's mm. with no that's with no defense, but you know, it's still worth well, life orb. Yeah. So let's say that's the route that she's going. Mm hmm Rock Tomb plus frustration equals a dead zapdos. Or two, two rock tombs. Two frustrations equals a dead zapdos. Yeah, but you want to make sure you can slow it down even if you can't outspeed it. Yeah, I mean, Rock Tomb is the play for long term in the game. If I if I see Zapdos early, especially, then Rock Tomb. Yeah, and honestly, two Rock Tombs probably would be your best bet because you'll add, you'll slow down everything. Sure. Just because frustration's cool and all, but if she switches into Crustle, yeah, Crustle still won't take that all that well. It'll take it decently, but I mean, look at this. Switch to Crustle, you're still looking at. It. Pretty much to Rock Tomb. You're doing more damage to the Crustle. Yeah. Than... Like, I'm okay with that, man. <laughs> so, I mean, like, with that, and then it's slow as hell. I mean, it was already slow anyway, but with that, you can guarantee a two hit KO at that point, basically. So, I like it. Yeah, that, that's the point. Uh, Cloyster, to can't take it all that well. The janitor. Right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it takes a little bit better, but yep. still. Okay, so that's it for the Stoutland. And last but not least, we have... Uh, and Thunder Wave, obviously. If you want to start spreading paralysis to Pokemon. Um, yeah, Thunder Wave is... Uh, I'm fully fully good with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not as useful in this battle. Because she doesn't have a bunch of speed to her. It's there. It's, it's always a good thing to have. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I mean, it can help with some of those sweepers to kind of prevent them from becoming threats. Including Clang Clang. Yeah. Um... But, last but not least, we have Emolga. E-M-O-L-G-A. And this nice. is the really interesting Pokemon. I uh, missed the shit out of Emolga, man. We haven't been using it lately, and I love it so much. Like, the red card, it's going to help with the one-hit KOs. It's, oh, so excited. Sorry, go ahead. So, here's something really cool about Emolga. First off, Taunt is more so for Pokemon like... Slowbro for Umbreon than it is for the setup Pokemon. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's also useful for the Clang Clang. But for the Pokemon like uh, Crustle and Cloyster, yeah. be careful. Because they can one-shot you with probably Rock Blast and whatever. 
uh, especially Cloyster because Icicle Spear hits five times. Yeah, it, with with uh, Cloyster's ability, um, it's got a it's got an ability that allows it to hit five times, guaranteed. Yeah. So, I'll, I mean, look, it's <laughs> yeah, that's that's double fucked. Rockwise too. <laughs> Crustal yeah, though, it, it still probably can kill you. Yeah, that's even on three. How's hits. the speed? Amolga? Oh, it's super fast. Super, super gonna kill it, so that's that's cool and everything, but on a crossle, you're not gonna go. No. So the, the taunt is not important for them. Right. Uh, yeah. The nuzzle is important for those Pokemon more. Mm -hmm. The Volt Switch is for switch, in, for switch Initiative. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But the red card is the trick. Yeah. That I want you to keep in mind. Yeah. So, I want you to look at this. Uh, let's... I wish I could have one hit on this. Mm -hmm. 12.5. Okay, 12. That's how much damage one Rock Blast will do to you. Scary. But here's the thing about that. Okay? Yeah. It's going to be switched out at that point. Do you, Have you ever used Red Card? I used it to mess around with you guys on an FFA one time, I believe. Okay, so I mean that's that's good. Um, people got surprised by it. It seems like it's not you know, it's not something that people expect. Yeah. So one of the things that Cloyster can do to you, which I doubt it'll, I doubt it'll ice shard you, but right. on the off chance it does, it'll still be switched out. Red card will, if if holder is hit, it forces the attacker to switch to a random ally. Right, and that's what that's where it gets super fun. Yes, because <laughs> having a Molga there to do that. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. So depending on speed. Volt switch, red card. Volt switch uh, is cool because that just gives you switch initiative. That's what I mean. Like bam, if, bam. And, no, and I get hit red card? No. Eh? No, no, no. Red card well, is I have when... to get hit first, okay. Red card's when you get hit, yes. Yeah. So what you want to do is... Volt switch with Emolga to get into a favorable matchup. Yeah. But if you have a Pokemon that is set up on you, switch out your Pokemon into Emolga, sacrifice it, or not sacrifice it, because it won't die most often. Red card, it's gone. There goes their boost. And if they're carrying uh, White Herb to get rid of those uh, stat drops, yeah, then you're golden. Hmm. So... At that point, that that's why we have a Molga like this because she loves to set up, and even the Mega Slowbro, if it's setting up calm minds on you, what what can it do if it hits you and you red card it out? And at that point, you can also taunt it. But and and, and it's beautiful for Zapdos too, honestly. Nah, Zapdos not that much. I no, I feel like well, if Zap I can kick Zap that thing out, man. Go I'm, ahead, hit me once, but you're not well, gonna well, hit me twice. Well, if if it goes for a Thunderbolt, you have Motor Drive too. So that's right. but. So it won't hurt you, but uh, if it has HP Ice, it'll it'll still do enough to you. Um, Zapdos HP Ice. Yeah, I mean it'll still do enough to you uh, if it's modest and yeah. Life Orb. So it's not a Pokemon that you want to uh, do that strategy on. Okay. Damn. Okay. One thing you could do per se, if you want to with Amalga, if you've given up, if your red card's gone already, mm. you could go the simple route of knocking off the Zapdos. Right. So I mean that's that's a strategy, but I would preserve that red card in the back uh, until you need it, and at the point where you don't think you'll need it, then you can go balls to the wall with the Amalga and do that. Yeah. I feel like Emoga and Mega Gallade um, potentially could be the ones that surprise at the end. Um, yeah, I think the I think the Lucario being special will be big, mm -hmm. but I think all in all you have a lot of different options to work with. So uh, one thing that I've meant that we've mentioned before is that you want to make sure you're prepared for everything. Yep. So let's run it down. Zapdos, we have Glade. We have Nidoqueen, we have Stoutland, 
as three ways to deal with Zapdos. Okay? Yep. Cloyster. We have Lucario. We have... Technically, Tentacruel can do some stuff with Scald, but Stoutland can do that, and Emolga can force it out on the switches. Yep. Snorlax. Lucario, Gallade, bam, bam, done. <laughs> uh, other Pokemon, Stoutland can do something to it. Next up, Dusclops. Dark Pulse, knock off, knock off, Knock off. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's how we deal with Dusclops. Aromatisse. Lucario. That's the big one. Okay? Yep. I'm just um, right. After that, you could go Stoutland. You could go maybe Tentacruel. Just because it resists. Yep. Stout and Tentacruel is two of my favorites just because of the versatility, and I'm already seeing that in what we're talking about. Exactly. When, when planning for her, you can just, they're, they're catch alls. They can do a lot to a lot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, keep in mind, Tentacruel does not take physical hits, it'll right. take a lot of special. Right. Crustal. This one's pretty simple. Lucario, uh, Nido Queen. Glade still can do a good amount of damage to it. Uh, Tentacruel with its Scald can do a good amount. And Stoutland can deal with it as well. And Amolga. Crustle, so much, Crustle's getting fucking wrecked by everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much Crustle can be dealt with by almost anything on this team, which is I good. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, Mega Slowbro. Mega Slowbro. Stoutland. Lucario. Stoutland. Nidoqueen. Emolga. Mega Gallade still can do good damage to it. Keep that in mind. Got it. And it's Destiny Bond. So really, everything can deal with it. <laughs> except for Tentacruel. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, I mean, technically, Mega Gallade can deal with everything. <laughs> uh, Umbreon. Lucario. Gallade. Um, Emolga. Yeah, yeah Emolga yeah. can do that with the Taunt. And Stoutland, probably, you're not going to want to Thunder Wave it, but... You can at least start whittling it down. Gudra. Ice. Gallade. Ice, baby. Gallade. Big one. Yeah. Stoutland. Big one. Needle Queen. Not as much. I'll show you. Because that's just a Pokemon that, in case we have to deal with it, I want you to be prepared. Right. Oops. Timid. There we go. Alrighty. That's what happens when you deal with Gudra. If it's Assault Vested. Mm -hmm. If it's not, you can still do something to it. But Talk. it's a Pokemon that's dangerous. Yeah. But when you have Mega Gallade... Looking a lot better. Looking a lot better. Meteor scares the shit out of me. But Ice Punch scares the shit out of it. Yes. And Knock Off, too, of course. So. Like, it's a. Oh, Close Combat, not. There we go. Close Combat almost one shots it. <laughs> right, right. So, with Stealth Rocks, it will one shot it. Or almost guaranteed to. Which is cool. Okay. So, Got next it. up, we have Go Goat. Go uh. Gallade deals with it. Needle Queen deals with it. Tentacruel can at least burn it, knock it off. Stoutland deals with it well. Amolga, not so much. And last but not least, we have the Clang Clang. Lucario. Shifting right gears. In the, right in the box. Gallade, right in the box. Needle Queen, right in the box. Uh, Stoutland can whittle it down and Thunder Wave it. In the general vicinity. And Amolga, for the most part, right in the box with the red card. There you go. Beautiful. And the taunt. That is beautiful. I think I feel ready. I feel good. All right. So one thing Ages I will say. of notes. One thing friend. I will say, if you're facing. Ages. Okay. Here's what I want to run by you. Okay. Crustal versus Tentacruel. 
Okay. Yeah. Crustal Tentacruel. Look at that damage. That's a lot of damage. Yep. Yeah. What happens if you're on a matchup between the Crustal and the Tentacruel? What are you going to do? Mm, I'm looking at Tentacruel right now. Um... See what scrolls. You could scald it, but what do you do? I want to scald it, but I don't want to scald it. <laughs> this is what. This is what. If you feel that she's gonna switch, you throw the you throw spikes up. You okay. start your toxic spikes instead of getting minimal damage on something that's gonna switch in like a slow bro. You start setting up. Pick your spots. Know when's the right time to do it. Yeah. Once those toxic spikes are up outside of the uh, Zapdos, I don't think she has anything that can get rid of it. So, that keep it in mind. Awesome if I got spikes up, yeah. And, I mean, Scald is like, if I know it's going to stay in, I would say Scald, which is what I was thinking. But on yeah. the switch out, yeah, toxic spikes. And if you know it's going to stay in, then obviously you can just, you know, dominate it because, take a look at this, it's a guaranteed one shot after Stealth Rocks too. So Fair enough. I think that's pretty much everything. Um, you know, just know your matchups. Yep. Um, remember to keep the calculator up. Yes, I have pages and pages and pages of notes now. And, and keep uh, keep Cerebi up I will. for uh, the Pokemon that she brings. So that way you know what moves they could have. Yeah, definitely. There we go. Cerebi is up. All right. There we go. This is a little bit longer, but we took care of everything. Yeah, we had to do that, man. You know, I want to be prepared. I want a goddamn win, man. I don't want my assistant coach to have more wins than me in the year after only playing one game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it's uh, we're, we're building the team in the right direction, so. It's a skill like anything else. I'm not trying to tank, man. I'm it's it's all about familiarity. Part. So. Yeah, it's getting there. I feel more confident with the ones that we've brought, and and I took the time to research her Pokemon a bit better. That was my downfall before. So I wasn't familiar. I'm getting familiar with my Pokemon, but I'm, I need to really take time uh, with my opponent's potential lineups. So Absolutely. that's great, man. Uh, Swami, I appreciate the help. Uh, I hope you guys, if you made it all the way through, I want you guys to, to type the word banana in the comment section. And uh, hopefully you learn something from this. I always learn every week with Swami. Uh, he's fantastic and, uh, you know, just so helpful to me. So hopefully we can make this work and take a victory. You'll have to see Sunday is when the battle will go up on my Sunday, channel. Sunday, Let's play Pokemon. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Come see the ass whooping of a century. Hopefully provided by me. Uh, we'll see. But yeah. <laughs> One way or cool, another, man. there will be an ass whooping. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And we will see you tomorrow on YouTube.com slash JustPlayPokemon for the battle. Peace. Peace.